we've got this O2-3 at a certain point and we've had various diversions into all sorts of esoteria but um, I want to get this done so one of the main things to do now is to put the the basic exoskeleton top handle on and also to fit this bit of kit and this actually goes over the inlet rubber and this piece here holds it onto the cylinder and of course this plug hole here this hole here is for the plug there's lots of fiddling around putting this together um, we probably won't be able to show absolutely everything of it but I'm just going to zoom in to let to make you aware of the the various bits just here so that's the rubber boot there for the air inlet this little pipe underneath that's the vacuum that's what operates the uh, the diaphragms then this one here that's the fuel pipe that there is the breather the plug HT lead we can ignore but this here is the control wires and there's a, a rubber grommet on there so all these bits need to be in the right place uh, otherwise it can turn out to be quite messy so let's just hope that during this rebuild we cover most of the things so here there's a rubber mount there and there's another mount there and the rubber is actually in in the handle here and the other rubber is at the bottom there so theoretically it should be fairly simple to fit this there we go and the torque headed bolts fit down the middle there are coarse thread into the plastic but we won't tighten it all up until we've got them all in place the next one is down there and then the other one from what I remember is through there if I can find the other screw it's been a bit awkward there. That's those screws tightened up. Now we've got to put this heat shield, uh, what have you, in place. There's a little hole down here just down there that's where the vacuum pipe comes through and if you don't get it in place again you have to strip half of it down again how it fits is a bit counterintuitive so you have to just uh, work out when it's right there we go However, we've got the wire, and the wire should come up through a gap here. So we just need to pop that round there, like that, so that the, the control wire fits in its own little housing. There we go. I think that looks right. I've just zoomed in. If you can see this white plastic, it's supposed to go fully over the black of that rubber there. So this will want pushing that way. I'm not going to do that on camera. 
because it'll look rather ungainly, but it just needs pushing so it's all flush. There we go, you see, it's flush up now. It's holding this rubber boot onto the cylinder. And there is the vacuum pipe and the control wires from the ignition unit are back up here, out of the way. And these two ones here are an earth, a pair of earths that go to that screw there. So that's that in place, which is great. It's a bit fiddly and um, you just have to sort of rearrange things and just ease things in place. So the next part is to fit the rear handle. Goes over there. There are two screws at the bottom and a rubber mount here. That rubber mount can be a bit tricky to get in the right place. What we have to do, of course, is to make sure that the fuel pipe comes up through there, the breather comes up through there, the control wires come through this hole here, um, etc. and that the induction rubber boot comes up through there. And there's a little hole in the rubber boot and it lines up with that there. Which when you look on the other side, just there, there's a little spigot and that's for the, uh, the vacuum pipe. I'll just zoom in on that. And there's the vacuum pipe there, which goes through the casing and lines up with that hole there, or connects with that hole there. Well, that was a fair bit of fiddling around. Uh, one thing that I'd forgotten about was this screw. There's a piece of this case that goes underneath here, so you've got to take that screw out. And then this piece of case, which, if I can find another one, there's a big hole there, okay, which fits beyond behind that bush. So you have to take that screw out, fit the rubber bush at the front here, which is not the easiest thing in the world, and start feeding all the bits through, getting the grommet in for the control cables, again a bit fiddly, and then getting the vacuum pipe. Effectively, you have to get up there before you fit, before you tighten everything up and just ease things apart with a pair of snipe nose pliers and put the, the vacuum pipe onto that little spigot that I showed you. So let's just zoom into the back here. So we've got the induction, carburetor induction rubber in place. There's the fuel pipe. The control wires are there with the grommet. And this is the breather pipe. So we're getting there slowly. That screw there is uh, back in place. The rubber mount is there. There is no screw in there. All that is fitted into there is one of these little top hat bushes. It just expands the rubber, make sure it doesn't come out. So, um, and then the next thing, of course, is, let me just see, I've got to fit these two screws here to stabilise and fit the back handle. So that's these screws done there, and the rubber bungs in there. The rubber bung for here is a smaller diameter one, the plastic bung. And be careful of this one down here. Sometimes the rubber mounting can get pushed too far out. So when you push this rubber, this um, plastic bung in, it's stuck out a reasonable distance. So pop the uh, plastic bung out and push the rubber bung back in 
the rubber mounting back in a bit so that when it finishes it's all nice and flush. On with the carburetor. Again it's we've got to get everything in the right place. So before you get any further make sure you get your control wires connected. So one of them, the shorter one, goes to a spade connector on this end. The other one is a bit... All it is, is the connector goes there, in there like this. I think this has been bent, so we're going to have to organise that. But effectively, if you can see, as that goes up, that there shorts against that. So, so what it does is shorts the coil out and then as you go on to start it drops down there so it's there is no connection so get those sorted first the next thing would be this there's a flange there and this keeps the the rubber venturi open so it just pops on the screws and that hole there allows the vacuum through to the carburetor. So the flange itself fits inside the rubber inlet pipe and when the carburetor is, when the diaphragm, when the butterflies in the carburetor are closed it stops the, the, the vacuum crated closing up that rubber pipe, just holds it open and then that hole there is in line with the vacuum. The next thing to do is to fit the carburetor and to so so you've got to put it into choke mode to get the lever out of the way. I'm going to see if we can do this without getting my fingers in the way and it just goes like that. Before I put it on I'll just draw your attention to the fact there's a fuel pipe connection there. So effectively at some point we want to move that over there. But at the moment it wants to be over here so it's out of the way. There we go. And we've just got a bolt in the end of the, the uh, fuel pipe at the moment. That will be a useful. It's obviously off this saw. And then just get a pair of snipe nose pliers and fit the fuel pipe. But we've done it. There we go. The next thing to do is this. This is the uh, adjustment rubber. So now we can pull the carburetor out a bit to fit the adjustment rubber. That's the outside and it fits just there. And then the breather fits in a little socket on the side like that. So we'll just do that off camera. The rubber boot's in place and the breather pipe comes up here behind the control wires underneath this uh, adjustment rubber boot and into that socket and then when you've got it connected like that then the thing to do is to pop it back into its rubber housing like that and then up the top here there's a little clip that takes the the, the breather pipe that's the breather from the tank because obviously as you're drawing fuel out of the tank you need to replace it with air or else you'll create a vacuum and then no more fuel will flow. There's the breather. On the earlier models it's just a little bit of pipe with a, a grub screw in the end and the air tends to find its way past the grub screw but they've got a, a bit more, I don't know whether it's advanced or um, above themselves or or what have you but that's a bit more complicated than a piece of pipe with a screw in it. Carburetor control rods. 
imagine that's the same okay exactly the same and the if we turn it round right at the bottom there that is the um, the throttle so what you have to do is you have to feed this control rod underneath and just turn it like that I'm doing it on this one because you can't really see and trying to get the carburetor in place and with the full, the control rod in place um, one falls off or the other one doesn't go in place and you've got the fuel pipe to deal with and all those sorts of things so you just have to go down the side of the carburetor feel for that hole and fit the control rod like that with the with the crank there facing towards the inner line of the saw you don't want it the other way around you want it this way so let's just do that that's the control rod in place I've just undone the screw underneath here so this can now lift up out of the way then just be careful of this uh, there's a spring there so just be careful of that let's just get the and that just pushes into there there we go then on this rear handle there are two hooks just here and they go down in there and then this all goes back together so now the dead man's handle working which is good and then we need to put the the choke lever the choke control in place so as we covered before um, throttle choke fully on now just to make it easier on everybody let's just zoom in a bit so I've got the uh, the control rod in the snipe nose pliers and it fits in a hole in the end there but we have to get the lever in the right place I've just stuck my thumb in the wrong place but there you go I don't think we want it on choke I think we want it on on there we go can you see that that is so easy let me just move the saw a bit can you see that that is so easy when you know how to get everything in the right place so having done that the next thing to do is to fit this which is the filter box, do the bolts up and we're there.